All right, let's go over the basic technique and some tips for soldering surface mount components. Uh, we're gonna focus on package sizes that are most common in guitar pedals. If you'd prefer a much shorter video with a quick demonstration and no narration, check out the description for a link. Now, I've talked to a lot of people who think you need a reflow oven or a hot air gun or some other special tools or materials, but it's actually really straightforward to just solder these components by hand using your regular soldering iron. There's certainly a lot of techniques out there and you can do extra steps like use more flux beyond what's in the solder, but we're gonna keep it simple. One quick note before we get started, you may be tempted to try a tiny soldering tip to match the tiny components, but I don't recommend that. Instead, use something bigger that'll make it easier to apply even heat to the component and the pad. So now let's build a tiny switch mounted fuzz pedal. And if you're interested, you can buy these circuit boards and some even tinier ones in my store and I'll add a link in the description. The first thing we want to do is put a little bit of solder on one pad for each of the components. You'll see in a moment we're doing this so we can tack down one side of the component so it holds it in place while we solder the other side. Now we're going to set this resistor in place. It's really helpful to have these pointy tweezers, but you can make do with whatever you have. Use the tweezers or anything other than your fingers to hold that resistor down while you apply the heat and melt that solder to tack it into place. Now we can flip it over and solder the other side. Now you don't see me doing it here, but sometimes you'll want to go back to that first joint and add a little more solder to get it a good solid connection. So those are the basic steps. Now let's go and solder this capacitor into place, but this time let's pay attention to uh, what, probably one of the most important aspects of doing this. And now this applies to through hole soldering as well, but the key here is you want to watch that solder wick up onto the component and you want to watch it spread out over the pad. Like you'll see the solder actually move. So this time let's watch closely while we apply the heat. And let's watch this next part a couple of times because you'll see I apply the soldering iron and the solder is just not moving. So uh, I actually rotate my tip a little bit to try to make sure it's getting good even heat on both the component and the pad. And if a little bit of rotation didn't solve the problem, I would have went and wiped the soldering tip on a sponge, got it nice and clean, you know, potentially even retinned it if necessary, and then gone back and tried again. If you're ever not sure if you got a good joint or something doesn't quite look right, just go back and reflow the solder, you know, apply a little more heat to it and watch it spread out. So you've seen a resistor and a couple capacitors. Uh, now let's look at a diode. It's, it's a little bit different because it has two little legs, but all of the process that we've done before still applies to this one. So there's really nothing new to learn. The one thing to be aware of is a diode has polarity, so it needs to be put in in the correct orientation. And it's really hard to see on these surface mount components. There'll be a tiny little line on one side of it. So, you know, use a good magnifying glass uh, to, to see which, which way it should go. And now we do a transistor. It has three legs, but we just keep doing what we've been doing with the other components. So we're gonna tack down one side and then solder the other two. And one little tip, you'll see that I have the solder right next to the component, ready to go. Uh, that's so that way I don't have to fumble with it or travel with it, and I can minimize the amount of time that I'm applying heat. And now we'll do an integrated circuit. In this case, it's an FV1. It's an SOIC package with uh, 28 pins. Uh, but nevertheless, you'll find it's the exact same process we did for the transistors and the diodes. So we're just going to uh, put a little bit of solder on the two opposite corners. We're going to tack down the chip. In this case, I actually use my fingers to hold it down, though you could also use a uh, tweezers. And then we go and we just solder each of the pins. Too easy. And here's another example where the solder wasn't taking, so there clearly wasn't a good application of heat. So I, I rolled that tip back and forth a little bit and that wasn't helping, so I went and I cleaned it off with uh, a sponge and gave it another try. So don't hesitate to stop if you don't see that solder sucking up onto the pin and onto the pad. Because watch as I, as I solder each of these pins, you'll see as I touch that solder, I want to see it get pulled up onto the pin and spread out over the pad. And if that's not happening, I, I try to reapply that heat or take a step back, uh, reassess, and then try again. And that's really all there is to it. Now there's a lot of different types of surface mount components out there, but in guitar pedals, the ones you're gonna see most often are the SO packages, like this integrated circuit here, or the diode we did, or the transistor we did. Uh, and then the resistors and capacitors are most often going to be 0805, and those are the ones we did. Sometimes you'll see uh, 1206, I think it is. They're a little bit larger, so they're a bit easier to work with. Very rarely will you see the 0603 because they're going to uh, be too low of a wattage and they're not gonna work well for guitar pedals. And our last step is, uh, it's, it's optional. Most fluxes 
don't tend to be very corrosive, but if you want it to be tidy or you're worried about corrosion, you should uh, wash off all the flux. And the easiest way to do that is just to take a toothbrush and some rubbing alcohol and scrub it a little bit. Well, I hope this was helpful, and that in the future, if you come across any opportunities to use surface mount, uh, you're not going to shy away from it, because you'll see it's actually pretty straightforward. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, I've got some tiny and some ridiculously tiny little fuzz pedal boards. They're a lot of fun, they're great for learning on, and you can stick them in a guitar, or make tiny pedals, or use them in GIFs. Alright, take care, have fun.